So, we're going to move on right now, and our next speaker to the stage is someone who is very dear to me. He's one of the first people I met in this community, and he uh, has been incredibly supportive of me personally. Um, and he made this happen today, honestly speaking. Now, I know a lot of us came together to make this happen, but... I wouldn't be standing here with a mic talking to you folks if it weren't for this man. So please, I want you to put your hands together for an incredible activist and a wonderful man, Tristan Dean. Lies, mostly lies, but thank you, Lorelai. Um, Oh, gosh. Okay, well, this is the smallest Pride event I've ever helped organize, but probably the most important. And I think that's what we need to remember. And don't feel discouraged because we only see some warm bodies in front of us because we have a video camera, and this is going to be going out on the Internet, and it's going to be seen by thousands, maybe even a million people. So don't feel discouraged. And to my beloved partner, Arjuna, it's not Schenectady. <laughs> Play your heart out, because millions of people are going to hear your music. <laughs> I've got the hardest acts in the world to follow because I programmed national trans speakers to speak first, and I am not that. I am an organizer. I rarely speak. But I'm really hoping this is my last speech for a while, so I decided I would try it. And I want to go back in history because I have been a part of Northampton for decades. Um, I'm wearing a t-shirt from a march that I attended in 1993. I was still out as a butch lesbian, but I knew I was trans and almost had the courage to say it out loud. 1993, this march did not include the T, um, so I'm going to show it to you. This is the T. I'm the T. T-Rex, and I'm bigger. Um, and so are all of us. In 1993, we didn't have it on the federal level yet. GLB was still fighting over B. Um, T, we were the people no one wanted to talk about, whether we were transsexual or transgender, drag queens, bush lesbians, or simply gender variant and straight, or whatever. We were not what GLB wanted to talk about out loud in Washington that year. Um, but in that year, that same year in 1993, here in Northampton, because Northampton has traditionally led the fight for every right and just cause, we added trans to the Pride March. We were the first in the nation to do so. I think Oregon did it a few months later. Um, and we were the first LGBT Pride March in the entire nation. And we did that because Leslie Feinberg came and asked us to. Leslie Feinberg defines as transgender, also defines as a trans man, but Leslie Feinberg is very clear that I am not a transsexual, I am transgender. Leslie Feinberg is as much a part of the trans community as someone on HRT seeking surgery like myself. Leslie Feinberg is an equal part of our community, regardless of the number of surgeries she has or he has or the hundreds of thousands of dollars any of us spend, and that's my message. We are one trans community. We are trans, we are transgender, we are whatever label we call ourselves, but if we are gender variant in any way, we are part of this movement. We are part of this movement. And gender variance is something that we all, I think all of us experience at some point. I mean, it's, it, it is a spectrum, you know, whether you're a femme little boy or a butch little girl or anything in between at any point in your life. The freedom to be yourself and have self-expression is a part of American democracy, and that's really what this is about. I wanted to begin this speech and be cute and funny and snarky and pull a quote from a movie and tell you that I see dead people. Because actually I do. Um, I decided to do this and bring this event about after deciding to give it up earlier because I'm tired of this. I'm tired of the bickering in the trans community. I'm really tired of it. Um, because my best friend just died last month. Um, my best friend in activism from my college days at UMass Amherst. 
Jason McDonald. Uh, he's a very courageous, young, gay activist who fought for trans rights and told us to include them before anybody in the student community there understood that it was important. And he said it before Leslie Feinberg showed up. And during that time, we were fighting the young Republicans. We were standing up to the bully of all time, Guy Glotus, who's now the Worcester County Sheriff, or was. I don't know if he won re-election or not. I hope he didn't. Um, but in the middle of that fight, um, Jason was outed to his conservative Catholic family. And his support for college was withdrawn. He was disowned. He became homeless. He never finished his college degree. And he barely survived. Um, he drifted from relationship to relationship, one roof to another, menial job after menial job, and he held on. And we stayed in contact, and I got phone calls, and I got emails, and at one point three winters ago, after I was divorced, and at the end of my rope, we found ourselves talking on the computer, both in houses without heat, in the middle of a very cold winter, wondering if we were gonna make it through that year and we both knew that we would. I'm one of the last people to talk to Jason um, before he died. Not Probably not the last, but one of the last. He sent me several emails. One was that he had just met a new lover and that they had gone on their first date and that after walking him home, Jason's lover never made it home to his home and that they didn't know what had happened to him and they couldn't find him. And then the last email I got, he told me things were dire and that he was feeling really down. And I was busy that night and I was tired. And all I said back was, you need to keep talking about this, talk on Facebook. And that was the last thing I heard until I heard that he was gone. So I decided, because this really shook me up, because it was 1990 when Jason lost his place at UMass because of homophobia. But I decided that his death shook me so hard, and I remembered so much of that passion and that youth, youthful zeal that we all had, and the vision we had, and the vision that Jason had for a world that included GLBT and more, because Jason also fought for social justice causes that included women and included the poor, that his work wasn't done, and neither was mine, and that I couldn't let my own petty and selfish anger at my immature and nascent community, let's be honest, keep me from doing the work that I've done for so many years. So I brought this back, um, and I'm happily at the end of this, this event going to hand the reins over to Nikki Vanderhoff, who is a kick-ass trans woman, she's a retired Marine, and if anyone can bring this nascent, nascent community together and have the strength to bring us forward, it will be Nikki. So thank you, Nikki, for taking it. Thank you. But I also wanted to talk about Sammy Cornell and better speakers than I have already honored Sammy. <coughs> Sammy and Vicky are my friends. Um, Sammy gave the keynote speech last year at the Trans Civil Rights Rally at First Baptist Church, and she represented the organizing board with her speech. And we wanted her to talk about what it means to stand up for the trans community and what you have to do. Because Sammy and Vicki were at every trans event I ever attended in a three-state New England area. And they were often homeless. They often had a car that was held together with band-aids. They usually were nearly or out of gas money and had to beg 10 bucks. But they always showed up. And that's what Sammy told the crowd last year. She said, you don't have to be a good speaker. You don't have to be brilliant. You don't have to have a college degree. You just have to show up. And that's what Sammy did. And I didn't realize Sammy was on her deathbed when I emailed her a few days ago and asked her to come to this, this event. I was hoping she would be our surprise speaker. And I had reserved a slot and not said anything to anyone for her. And somehow, I know that Sammy is here today, so I can feel her. Sammy, thank you. So, I wanted to also talk to you about more of the dead people that I see. I'm 48, I just turned 48. A lot of 
A lot of heroes have shaped me and shaped my thoughts and my decisions and my own activism. I'm from the Midwest. I can't help but think about Brandon Tina. I can't help but think about Matt Shepard. As well as people like Sylvia Rivera, Louis Sullivan, and so many names, new names that we read every year at our community TDR. I can't help but think of the AIDS quilt and thousands and thousands of names, including trans, gay, brothers like Louis Sullivan. Lorelai is right, there is an intersection between GLB and T. We are not in separate bubbles. Gender variance affects all of us, including heterosexual straight whites, heterosexual straight blacks, heterosexual, heterosexual straight everybody with privilege. Gender variance is part of personal expression, it's part of being free, it's part of what America is founded on, and that's really what we're fighting for, and if you can't find any other reason to be an ally than that, do it for yourself, and the right of your, you and your children to express their differences, including within the realm of gender. So, like Lorelei, I had one speech, but I can't just throw it in a row. I want to thank everybody who did show up. I want to thank my loving partner, Arjuna, for handling sound. I hope you enjoy your music. And I want to leave you one more time with Sammy Carnell's message. Just show up. Even if it's just on Facebook.